Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Weekly Scripture Reveal, Bible study dedicated, introducing all to the Word of God. You find this teaching on YouTube.com channel, Minister Herbert Pankey, living with God through Jesus according to the Holy Scriptures. Today's topic is Earth's Informational Strongholds, God's Protective Process. Second, the scripture text is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 17. Scripture gives us commands to obey, patterns to follow, principles to lead, and promises to assure. See if you can identify those as we go to today's teaching. The modern cell phone has all types of information at your fingertips. This information either agrees with God's standard for your life to live by, or doesn't agree for God's standard for your life to live by. One of God's goals is protection from what doesn't agree with God's standard to live by. So I had a question. Why do I need to apply God's protection? John 10.10, 10, New Living Translation. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. If you do not apply God's protection, the thief will come, steal, kill, and destroy you from reaching God's rich and satisfying life. By, apply, by applying God's protection, you are opening the door to defeat the thief and live according to the purpose of God of having a rich and satisfying life, all found in John chapter 10, verse 10. Second question, why do I, how do I apply God's protection? Knowledge, understanding from the word of God. Got to read the word of God, got to get an understanding from the word of God. And as you grow in that knowledge, you believe, accept as true the word of God. You have to accept it and not just accept it, but have it manifested in your life. And the last thing I must apply is trust. Depend on the word of God. Depend on it. Trust it. Rely on it. And all knowledge, belief, and trust is your faith in God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. I'm going to be reading several versions of this verse, starting with the King James Version. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The New Living Translation of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments, verse 5. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. The Amplified Version of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. The weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Verse 5, we are destroying sophisticated arguments in every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. The message version of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it's actually expanded to verse 3 to 6. The world is on principle. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fear, but we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation, but they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warp philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. 
Our tools are ready at hand for the clearing for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. Now, before we go into 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, I want to go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 17, New Living Translation, starting at verse 10. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, verse 11. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Verse 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Verse 14, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Verse 15, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Verse 16. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil, verse 17. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This verse reveals the weapons revealed by protective clothing we put on. So the weapons that were spoken about that are being spoken about in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 17, reveal the protective clothing we are to put on. It's, it's revealed by the clothing that Paul had saw as he was being held captive by the Roman soldiers. God's mighty weapons, there are five defensive and one offensive weapon. The defective Defensive weapon of truth is the belt of truth in Ephesians 6.14, holds the armor in correct place. The defensive weapon of righteousness, God's body armor, Ephesians 6.14, protects the torso of the body. The defensive weapon of peace is the shoes, the peace that come from the gospel message. Ephesians 6.15, protect the feet. The defensive weapon of faith a shield of faith, Ephesians 6.16, 6, position to stop incoming assault. The defensive weapon of salvation is the helmet of salvation, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, to protect the mind. The offensive weapon is the word of God, sword of the spirit, Ephesians 6.17, assault on the enemy. The armor weapons defined by scripture. The weapon of truth, John 14, 6, New Living Translation. Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The weapon of righteousness, Ephesians 4, 24, New Living Translation. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. The weapon of peace. John 6.33, New Living Translation, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. The weapon of faith, Hebrews 11.1, 1, New Living Translation, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. The weapon of salvation, Romans 10.9, New Living Translation, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The offensive weapon of the word of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, starting at verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaching us and teaches us to do what is right. Verse 17, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. This is the gospel message, John 3.16, New Living Translation. 
For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. This is what Christians are living for, proclaiming and defending. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 4 to 5, New Living Translation, going back to that. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. Verse 5, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Second, uh, this verse reveals the Holy Spirit equips Christians for the fight, providing the weapons they need which we saw in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 17. Now these worldly weapons that we fight, wealth, fame, political might, racism, information, and etc. These worldly weapons may yield some power on this earth, but they are useless in spiritual battles. The devil's strongholds are every proud argument that keeps people from knowing God, and also the devil's strongholds are rebellious ideas that keeps people from knowing God. Scripture examples stronghold introduced. The example, the devil's informa informational stronghold, and you can read, I'm going to read Genesis chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, starting at verse 3. And this is Eve speaking. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat, God said. We must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. That's what God had said. That's the truth. Now, Satan's response, you won't die. The serpent replied to the woman, the enemy, Satan, is introducing a stronghold to Eve. And let's read John 8, 44, New Living Translation. For you are the children of your father, the devil. This is Jesus speaking to the Jewish leaders. And he's telling them exactly who they're following after, which we have the example of Satan lying back in the garden. Continue reading as I continue reading John 8, 44. And you love to, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And that's exactly what he, Satan did to Eve, introducing the stronghold of doubting God and moving into an area that caused all of mankind to fall. And that is the example of John 10.10. 10. The thief's purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. That is, we see Satan's purpose carried out in Adam and Eve. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. This verse reveals the world of ideas is the real battleground for good, for God and the devil. I'm going to read that one more time. The world of ideas is the real battleground for God and the devil. That's what was taking place in the garden. It was an idea, and that was the battle. The battle was truth versus a lie over this idea of you will not die. Many complex theories and philosophies try to block people from knowing the truth about God and worshiping him. These false philosophies that divert glory from God and hide the truth are the devil's strongholds. In Corinth, advances in Greek philosophy were held in high esteem. The believers were tempted to evaluate the gospel with the various tools of Greek philosophy. In an earlier letter, Paul had already told the Corinthians that the gospel would appear as foolishness to those who saw the world through the lens of secular Greek philosophy. Please read 1 Corinthians 1, 22. Just as an army would attack the fortress, so Christians must take apart and defeat these false and evil arguments. Today we covered 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 17. Earth's informational strongholds 
God's protective process. You find this teaching on youtube.com, channel Minister Herbert Pankey, getting to know Christ Jesus. Thanks for joining. God bless.